promised to order the question and answer. If you keep practicing, you can maintain them. It is the practice that maintains them. Also, once you have developed a sort of insight, you can see the important parts of it. That insight also can help make your life very simple. When we don't have that insight, we make our lives very complicated. You are doing too much unnecessary things. Things King too much unnecessarily, seeing, hearing, eating, and going here and there. Once you develop this inside it, will make you see that there are important things in your life, and there are things that are not important. You will see the two very different ways. Mostly, we put everything together and think that everything is of equal importance and we get involved in so many things that we don't have enough time not to meditate even. A lot of our worries, worrying about the children, the husband, the wife, or the work, are not necessary. Once you develop these insights, you worry very little. Your worries are not immediate problems. Worry only when you get sick you need to worry about it and see a doctor. But you don't sit and think of what will happen in the next 10 years or 30 years. You do what you need to do, what you have to do, and you can let go a lot very simple. That's why I said that most meditators, real meditators who keep the insights, live a very lead, a simple life. They cannot live a complicated life. One of my friends who is a good meditator said that she is really afraid of getting something new in the house. Because the new thing will occupy her mind, will take her time. Most people, when they go to the city, there's many stores full of so many beautiful things, useful things. I want this, I want that. No answer. The, this person says that whenever she goes down the road and looks at the stores, she sees so much junk. Who needs these things? Who is creating these things? People are creating these and making you believe that you really need it. And if you don't have it, you won't be happy. You are connected. People who understand this mental process deeply know that they don't need it. You can do it away with so much and let your life become very simple and you will have more time to meditate. It is important to maintain, maintain. It is important to maintain the insight and the only way to do it is to keep practicing. If you can develop deeper and deeper and reach the first stage of enlightenment. There is no way of coming back again. Until we reach the first stage of enlightenment, we have to keep practicing. Question and answer. I said that Nama has many meanings. We already know that Nama means name. Rupa means form. Nama, mental process. Rupa, physical process. Use the meaning according to the context. Nama has many other meanings too. It is confusing. Once you understand that there are many things and you use the right one uh, for that text, it, it won't confuse you anymore. Question and answer. In brief, the first insight is to see that there is a physical process which is not a being and there is another process. Consciousness, mental process, the two are distinct. Physical process is not mental process. Mental process is not physical process. But one conditions the other. For example, when you hear something, the sound conditions the hearing. The ear conditions the hearing. The sound and the ear, which is the ear drum, is rupa. 
each code processor, you pay attention to the sound and this hearing consciousness arise, which is another. Another example is when you want to move, the intention to move arise, which is consciousness and the body moves. Even when you close or open your eyes, there is the intention to open and close. Intention and consciousness arising with it is nama. Second insight is very close to it. You see that this nama arises because of this rupa, and this rupa physical process arises because of this mental process. Depending on the situation, the two condition each other. Seeing the conditioning, seeing that is arises. Because of condition is, is the second insight. I have not spoken about the third and the fourth insight yet, but since you wanna know, I'll explain them very briefly. The first insight is anatta, seeing nama and rupa as a process, not a being, not an entity, not soul. It means anatta. Seeing that it arises because of a sufficient process, it is also anatta. It is not created, so this is also anatta nana. The third insight is all three, anatta, dhaka, and anatta. Seeing this process arising and passing away, only in the third insight, the person begins to see real anika arising and passing away, but not really mature. The fourth insight emphasizes more on anika, not dhaka, and anatta. Although it comes together, it emphasizes more on arising and passing away. Next week, I will talk about the third and fourth insight in detail. As I repeat things, I hope it will get clearer and clearer. Question and answer, even the first two, you will not be able to get them by just reading. It is easy to understand when you talk about them, but it is not real insight, it is knowledge. When you experience them, you will know because at that moment, you are not thinking about them. You are really seeing very clearly. It is really amazing how clear it is. It is really surprising also. Question and answer. A few people that I have known that don't read much about reach the first insight, but it is very difficult to reach deeper insights. They are the thoughts are just thoughts. There is no being there. I know one person that like that. He didn't go to any meditation center, but when I spoke with him, the way he spoke about it makes me feel that this person has a real deep insight about just process. He said there are just the thoughts. They are not mine. They come and go. Question and answer. Minor insight according to my understanding of what you mean. Buddha spoke about three different kinds of understanding. Also you understand and something when you listen to somebody talking or when you read. There is a kind of minor insight. The second, when you think deeply, you get a deeper insight. And the third is real meditative insight. The first two levels, you can just read, listen, and think. You can clear away a lot of wrong views just by reading and thinking. That's why it is important to read, to listen, and to think to ask questions and to make things clear. That's why we are here to get minor insights. Listening and reading can give you deep insights, but there is one more stage to go. Meditative Napa, this is the beauty of the teaching of the Buddha. Buddha acknowledges the knowledge or understanding you get from reading and the listening and the knowledge that you get from thinking and mostly people stop there, especially Western philosophers, they stop there. Buddha goes one step further. Meditative Nana. Question. 
but you can't give a really deep insight unless you are meditating. Answer. That's right. That's why Buddhism is practical. If you really want to understand Nana, Rupa, Anita, Dhaka, Anatta, there is no other way to get it. The only way is to really meditate, to become really mindful. That's the profundity of the Buddhist teaching. Christian answer. Samatha meditation is the base, a very strong base. Very good, if you can develop that question and answer. Buddha talked about mindfulness every day, and mindful is vipassana. Buddha has repeatedly spoken about looking deeply. Uh, Satipatthana is vipassana. These four foundations of mindfulness have four different types of objects. In practice, we cannot read the category them like this because they are they get mixed. When you sit and meditate on breathing, it is kaya nupasana, and then thoughts come, and you watch a thought, it is chitta nupasana. You feel something in your body, which is pleasant or unpleasant. That is vedana nupasana. Sometimes your mind becomes very calm, and you see, oh, it is calm which becomes uh, Dhamma Nupasana. When you are mindful and you know there is mindfulness, it is Dhamma Nupasana. Nu is a short form of unknown, which means repeatedly. Pasana means to see, to see it again and again. When you see something just for a brief moment, you are not really sure of what you have seen. But when you see it again and again, it becomes more and more clearer. If I have something in a cup and I cover it, show it to you for a brief second, cover it again and ask you what is in there. You may not be very sure. If you have some time to look at it, you know what it is. So it is keeping your mind again and again on these processes. Kaya Vedana Sita Dhamma Question and answer, without a cause, nothing can arise. When you have a pleasant sensation, it is because, for example, the most obvious is unpleasant. If you pinch yourself, there is an unpleasant sensation. Because of the pinching, something coming in contact, it is hard. So you feel pain. When you sit on a very soft mattress, it is very pleasant. With the eye, you have only neutral feeling, neutral Vedana. It has no pleasant, no pleasant and or unpleasant. But when you interpret it, is, it as pleasant or unpleasant, it becomes another process, a mental process. When you like, when you see it, is not I consciousness anymore. This liking is another consciousness. When you see something, truly seeing is I consciousness. And at that moment, you don't even know what you see. There is only pure seeing. Another step is when you identify with what you see, and then you decide whether you like it or not. Consciousness is Nama, the object is Rupa, which is Kama. When we see, we only see Kama. I consciousness is only Kama. It does not see man or woman or anything, only Kama. The next step happens in the mind, which is interpretation. When the mind interprets, it is not seeing consciousness anymore. It is mind consciousness. Because of your past experience, when you see something, you know what you see because you liked it before you like it now. If you see something totally new and you don't know what it is, you don't have either liking or disliking. You just think, what is this? So it is past conditioning. For example, in Burma, a lot of people like this. Fishy sauce, ground fishy paste, ground like 
flower. It is sticky and very smelly. People like it very much, and I hate it very much. So it is conditioning. When seeing is not mixed with anything, not mixed with memory, there is pure consciousness of things. It has no liking or disliking. Only the memory which comes with the thought makes liking or not liking happen. When you see something and you like it, it is because of your past conditioning. When you see something and you don't know what it is, then you have only this consciousness of what it is. What is it? You made no decision on whether you like it or not. So liking or not liking is conditioned. We can be conditioned that too. For example, you have lived here for many years and until you came here, there were many things of which you didn't have experience. Now, after a long time, you are used to eating, seeing, hearing so many things. Now you like them. Before, you didn't know whether you liked them or not. Sometimes we eat something and we are not sure whether we like it or not. But if we eat that thing again and again, slowly we acquire the taste and we begin to like it. For example, before I came here, I didn't have any taste for soy milk and now I'm beginning to drink a small quantity of it and I'm beginning to acquire the taste. I'm beginning to like it. I'm developing Greedy, greed now. Question and answer. There is a very good question without developing sufficient intensity. In the first insight, you cannot move into the following insight. One insight leads to another when it is ready. When it is sufficiently developed and strong enough, it leads to another insight. But we cannot voluntarily go into another insight. We cannot do that. It will happen. Thank you very much for that question. Don't be in a hurry. Stay where you are and develop deep in snuff. You cannot push yourself too hard.